Why is my world, my country, maybe my life in such disarray? God gives the answer in Jeremiah chapter 2. He says this, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hooed out for themselves uh, broken cisterns that can hold no water. The illustration that God gives through the prophet is very indicative of today. Take water. It is so abundant in our society, we don't give it a second thought. But as Benjamin Franklin says, there is a concern with water when the well runs dry. Think about that. If the power grid went out, how would things change? Even when a storm comes, people raid the store and take out water because it is necessary for life. Of course, the Bible here is not speaking of that type of water. It is talking about God's word, spiritual water. And he is warning that the well is almost dry. It has been polluted and offers very little use of this day. This is the same thing that's happened here in our world. Why? Well, Paul warns the Colossians in chapter 2, 8. He says to them that don't let your life be polluted by science, so-called, by vain deceit, by the traditions of men, and by the rudiments of the world, but rather stay in Christ. So stop for a moment and think and consider our world. Do we see outrageous actions that make no sense? Just take a look at the Olympic Games. The amount of homeless people that we have, when we didn't have homeless people before, and uh, people provided for them. How about our nation? What is going on around us? How about our lives? Are we making good decisions? I suspect that we are not because the fears of Colossians 2.8 have come to roost. We are banking on water that is contaminated. Yes, we all of us have contaminated the water in many ways. How do you say? By unbelief. If you're a Christian and you're reading the word of God and you don't believe it 100%, you and your lack of faith are drinking water that is of no value. The lack of fear of God is the big one. Would anybody make the mockeries of God that they do today if there was a fear of God? And I'm going to get on more about this fear of God and how necessary it is. But we have no fear of God. We'll go out and we pollute the water, the spiritual water. We accept the water from men, the rudiments of this world, the cultures around us. That is what's supreme over the Bible. It must change. We must go to that well and meet with Jesus just as Jesus met with that Samaritan woman. He is waiting there for you to come. Whoever drinks of the water that I give him, Jesus says, will never be thirsty again. The water that I give them will become a spring of water welling up until eternal life. That water is the water that changes lives, that brings order to a disorderly world, that convicts sinners. You see, the people that have done these things in these countries to defame Christianity or whatever that they're doing are people without that knowledge and out without the fear of the Lord. Yes, we could be angry at their sin, but we should be praying for their eyes to be open because God even wants to make a place for them at his table if they repent and come to Jesus. When we come to the well, if you decide to do and open up your Bible, go with total reverence. The Bible clearly states this particular fact. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of of wisdom. We don't have any of that. We have watered down God's word. We have changed it by nullifying some things we don't want to agree with. We believe science over the Bible when it is. It, this is what science has gotten us. Think and look around. 
and see what has science delivered to us today. It is what I am talking about here. Here's the thing. We are on a downward spiral. I don't know when the Lord's going to come and judge, but we are on a downward spiral. But this is what God offers, repentance. If we repent, that means to turn around and turn toward God, that God will accept us. In Isaiah chapter 1, the Lord says this to his people. Come now, let us reason together. God has the capability of turning our world around. Jesus gives us the capability to have our sins washed, washed away, white as snow. So here's what we need to do as Christians. And if you're not a Christian, you need to do this is come to Jesus. Come to the well. Listen to what he says in chapter 4 of uh, John. Read that. And then believe in Jesus. Wash yourself as white as snow. Get that water, that living water. And then we can turn this world the right side up. Until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.